What's up, guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com, and I'm here again with Coach Marlow from Light Tower Baseball. And not only is he a baseball coach and former baseball player, but he is also a physical therapist. So we're going to talk a little bit about today hip mobility, uh, thoracic mobility, and these are all huge when it comes to pitching velocity, bat speed, swing speed. All, it's very important for all of that, right? That's right. What do we got? So like John said, hip mobility, thoracic mobility, there's a direct correlation between that and velocity, okay? Or how hard you can throw the ball, how fast you can throw the ball. Also, there's a correlation between hip mobility and the rate or of UCL tear. So the tighter your hips, okay, the more likely you are to have a UCL tear just because the, helps, the hips help decelerate the arm. So if you don't have the hip mobility, the elbow, the UCL, is taking the brunt of it, trying to slow the arm down, which can lead to a UCL tear. So as a physical therapist, I'm gonna show you how we assess hip mobility because you know a lot of velocity programs, they talk about hip mobility, and we're gonna show you how to assess hip mobility and also thoracic mobility. All right, so as a physical therapist, I'm gonna show you how we assess hip mobility Okay, which doesn't, doesn't really matter if you're in the clinic or on the baseball field, the way we assess it is still the same. So I'm gonna have you lie down, legs out straight, and I'm just gonna have you relax. So first thing I'm gonna assess is we'll go glove side leg. So I'm gonna come on over here since he's a righty thrower. I'm gonna bend the knee up to 90 degrees, which is even with his hip. And then to measure internal rotation, I'm focused on which way the knee moves, okay? Not the foot. So with internal rotation, I'm gonna bring him here. So he's pretty tight there, okay? He's at about 35 degrees, okay? Normal is about 45, okay? So that's internal. Now I'm gonna measure external, okay? So once again, pretty tight, okay? And he's just relaxed the whole time. Okay, and I can also use this as, as a treatment to stretch hip mobility. Now I'm not gonna crank on him, okay? Tell me, do you feel a little bit of a stretch there? A little bit. Okay, tell me when. I'm good. Huh? And then I'm just gonna hold that, okay? Okay, and then when I assess his throwing arm, same thing. I'm gonna bend that knee up, okay? Other leg out straight. Remember, I'm focused on the knee. So I'm gonna turn it in, okay? I'm just rotating on that knee. A okay. Little bit mo more mobile over here. Feel stretch? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm gonna go external rotation. A lot more mobile this way. And once again, if you're gonna do it as a stretch, you wanna hold it, okay? And this is something great to do with pitchers before they throw. And a lot of times they can get up and throw a baseball and be like, wow, that feels way better. So why is hip mobility important for pitching or baseball in general? So the hip mobility, it acts as a accelerator and also a decelerator depending on which hip you're using. When we swing, okay, we've got to be able to have a firm front side and transfer the weight and get into this lead hip. Okay, so you can see the hip mobility that's required, okay? If a hitter has decreased hip mobility, which you'll see is actually riding up on that hip, okay? See the action? This action, which is a bad action or a weak front side compared to that action, okay? So that's good for hip mobility. Also, with pitching. When I'm pitching, I've gotta be able to get into that front leg and drive through it, okay? If I have a weak front side or decreased hip mobility, I'm not gonna be able to get down and I'm gonna fall off the rubber. It's a compensation due to decreased hip mobility. And I think pitching, at least for me, uh, is very similar to hitting too. I still wanted to pitch against that front side. I wanted to have a firm front side. I wanted, didn't wanna to be too weak. But also on the back side, I, I've noticed that, and I think this is maybe why I'm more mobile in my, in my uh, right leg than my left leg, is that I always wanted to keep my knee inside of my back foot, but also create that energy away from the rubber. So to do that, you really have to have some good hip mobility in here to get to this position where you're pushing out and not letting your knee stack over your foot. And you'll see a lot of pitchers, even hitters, doing this when they try to push out, their knee is getting stacked over their foot or going outside, they're coming this way. You really wanna stay inside and still create that tension and drive out. And to do that, you have to have good hip mobility, in my opinion. Right. 
Right. So just the way we assess hip mobility, which direct correlation between hip mobility and velocity and also UCL tears. So what about thoracic mobility? Thoracic mobility, here's how we assess it. All right, so here's how we assess thoracic mobility. And I'm gonna do it on Coach Madden here. So basically I'm gonna have him sit somewhere where he can apply pressure, inward pressure with his legs and his thighs, okay? Which is gonna lock in his hips. We don't want any rotation coming from the hips, the lumbar spine. We want it all to come from the thoracic spine. So he's gonna get in good posture. And then all I'm gonna ask him to do is I want you to squeeze in with your thighs to lock in your hips and you're just gonna rotate to the left. Okay, good. And now I'm gonna rotate to the right. So you can see a lot more rotation to the right. Once again, to the left. Okay, a little bit better that time, and then to the right. So once again, this is a way we assess it, but it also can be used as an exercise. Okay, good. What is your thoracic spine? Like what part of your spine are we talking about? So the thoracic spine is you have 12 vertebrae that they're in the middle of your back, and the thoracic vertebrae are the ones that your ribs come off of. The thoracic vertebrae, they are good for rotation. So you have your cervical, your thoracic, and then your lumbar, okay? The thoracic, once again, are for rotation, and that's gonna help throwing. We need that rotation, which is gonna help generate speed force to throw the ball harder. Also, when I think of thoracic uh, spine, I'm thinking about posture too, is that correct? Yes, yes. So, very important. What limits our rotation can be bad posture, like he said. If we're leaned over like this, so go ahead and grab the bat, set up in that same position, and let's just put you in a slouch position. Now I want you to go ahead and rotate. Oh, so yeah. you, see how limit and you see how limited he is there. Okay, so as a pitcher or as a thrower, we don't want to be in this hunched over position when we go to throw. We've got to get big spine to get, help get that good rotation or big chest. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to go check out uh, Light Tower Baseball. I'll leave all the information down below. And uh, we'll talk to you in the next video.